very warm welcome to Daily Dispatch powered by HSBC. I'm Priya Sheet and you're joining us on this very interesting panel discussion on the whole use car space. And before I dive into the discussion, I want to introduce you to all the panelists uh, out here. We have with us Rajat Mahajan, who is a partner at Deloitte India. We have Webhav Sharma, who is the founder and CEO at Carslo. And we have Akshay Singh, who is the Chief Strategy Officer at Room. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us today. I want to begin with you, Rajat, to talk a little bit about the use car space. We've seen so many unicorns uh, over the last year and we've seen the space grow by leaps and bounds. Tell us a little bit about what's been driving growth in the space. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me here, Priya. Uh, see, it's a fundamental problem, right? Whenever you have on one hand, one customer who's trying to buy something and another one who's trying to sell. And then there is a lot of lack of transparency, trust, as well as you know, the discovery of price is very difficult. Right. It was bound to give uh, you know, birth to all the great uh, unicorns as well as startups that we are seeing in this market. So I would say that that's the primary driver of this whole emergence of the used car market and especially the largest trend that we are seeing right now is converting that into you know, the unorganized sector into an organized sector. Right? Because in India, we have you know, a large number of traditional used car dealers, right? 40, 50,000 or so. You still say, right, 1,500 to 2,500 are the big guys, right? But at the end of the day, when the customers, you know, the day is spoiled by choices, thanks to all the online shopping, buying, everything that has been done. Now, this entire emergence of the organized e-commerce play, and especially on the omni-channel front, is giving a lot of relief to it. And a few other demand drivers that I see, right, uh, is on the non-metro demand, right? Earlier, the this entire used car market was, you know, completely restricted to a few large cities. Now the demand from two, you know, two tiers has increased significantly. Right, if I look at the last four years, it has now moved from fifty-five percent to nearly seventy-five percent. NBFC funding disbursement for the new car loans have got uh, have registered the highest growth rates. Right, that's another big uh, leap, honestly speaking, because in India, a large part of these purchases are funded by. Uh, some bank or the financial institution. Uh, rapid changes in technologies, right? Because uh, vehicles are having, the new vehicles are having short lifespans in terms of variants, et cetera. So because of this short lifespan, because earlier it used to be a six, seven years facelift and three, four years of variant change. Now the entire cycle is changing. So the customer also wants to upgrade into a new product or a new model. And hence, right, I mean, it uh, the easiest thing for, uh, the customer to do is first try out the used car and then move into a new uh, the brand of the choice, so to say. Uh, last point I'd like to make over here is uh, uh, this market. Uh, honestly speaking, if we follow the people, always compare right. I mean, the number of cars per thousand people, etc. Right, that's a driver for new cars as well as used cars. You know, subsequently, but I think in India it is going to probably grow a little faster compared to the rest of the market now in the next three to five years time frame because we did not have these startups. We did not have the, <coughs> excuse me, the relevant technologies in place to make some of these things happen, to bring the entire smart app, the entire, uh, you know, the super apps and the entire alliances and the ecosystem play which is going to happen, which is already happening and probably it will happen in a much faster way. Right. Uh, thanks to that, Rajat, for giving us an overview of the whole uh, market. I want to come to you, Akshay, to talk a little bit about uh, how Zoom has really grown over the last year and what the roadmap for 2022 looks like, considering that, uh, you know, Zoom has also gone ahead, filed a DRHP, et cetera. Sure. Um, uh, so, so in terms of uh, uh, growth, you know, I'll echo some of the points that Rajat mentioned. Right, post COVID, we have seen a lot of demand shift away from uh, public transportation to personal mobility, away from ride sharing and the likes of Uberola towards personal mobility. And uh, because of the financial uncertainty, there has been a shift in demand towards uh, used vehicles compared to uh, new vehicles. Another factor that is driving the growth of uh, used vehicles is the supply crunch on the new vehicle side. Right, where you, you would have heard of semiconductor shortage, which has really elongated the waiting periods for buying a new car, right? And because of that, and given the, the situation out there, a lot of people are pref preferring to go for a, a used vehicle. So all of that has boosted our business uh, quite uh, rapidly. 
exactly, right? Uh, uh, and then in terms of the, the way ahead and how we are planning about things, again, I'll echo a couple of uh, points that Rajat mentioned. Firstly, we do expect to see more and more of the, uh, the market move online. There we are already in a, that has always been our key business model. And, you know, we'll continue seeing uh, or benefiting from the shift to online. Second thing that is uh, that we are also seeing is a shift in demand away from the, the metros, the tier one cities to the tier two and tier three cities as, as the, the people in these cities get uh, you know, wealthier in terms of uh, income as uh, the infrastructure in these cities improves. You know, we believe that um, over the next five years, almost 70% of the used car demand would come from tier two, tier three and beyond cities, right? So th that's the second key trend that we are looking at uh, capturing. The third one is, um, you know, as uh, the quality of vehicles improves and uh, again, you know, the aspiration levels of Indian consumers improves, there is a demand for, uh, a, you know, the next car. So a slightly bigger car, an SUV. Right, we see a lot of people moving up the value chain, like a two-wheeler uh, person buying their first car or a first-time buyer buying their second car, which typically tends to be larger and more comfortable for a bigger family. So th those are uh, some of the areas that we would be uh, focusing on. So expanding beyond the large cities and focusing more on the uh, larger SUVs and premium vehicles. Right, uh, interesting perspective there, Akshika. Thanks for that. Uh, Webhav, I want to come to you to talk to you a little bit about the kind of trends that you've seen evolving. You see similar trends evolving in the uh, space. Uh, tell us a little bit of, about how your experience has been. See, my understanding is that uh, pre on cars market was already there. The, it, it has been growing for last 10 years. The shift has come into the organized side of it. People are now moving from or unorganized channels to organized channels. And then digitization has been happening. There are many online players. And uh, so same thing has been coming with us. We are following uh, the growth has been coming from non-metro cities and our focus has been in those areas. Plus in terms of using moving towards digitization, we are working on virtual reality kind of technology. So yes, the growth has been there over last two years because of COVID, the technology is being further used to allow by home test drives and online visibility of cars, giving them pictures, everything showing cars online. So digitization and non-metro cities has been the key focus for us. And yes, then going forward over next five years, the growth is further expected. And new cars versus pre-owned cars, the growth pre-owned cars has been overgrowing the new car market. And uh, the number was somewhere around 1.2, 1.3 times the new car market, which is as of today, 1.5 times. And we said to, we are seeing it to be increased to around two times the new car market. So yes, the, the number, the demand has been coming in the new car market. And that is where we are also playing. Right. Uh, you know, Rajat, I'd like to bring you in to understand whether technology will be the key driver uh, for the used car market and how uh, the kind of role that technology will play uh, in the whole growth of this market going forward. So the technology or the digital things is going to be a driver, but actually the fundamental of the core of it is the experience, right? Because if the customer gets the right experience, they get the right trust because imagine, right? I mean, you try and buy or sell a car. Uh, what happens, right? I mean, am I getting the right price for it? That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Second is when will I get the money, right? Because you used to see here horror stories, etc. People get the money after a month, two months, etc. So if the technology is being put to use for resolving and taking care of some of these customer concerns, right? I think that is the table stakes fundamentals. The next level, which is the differentiation aspect, because everybody is going to come out with, and not only the you know startups are also enabling a lot of OEMs to actually become more digital from a used car perspective. But the point is going to be that the differentiation will come when you provide more services, right, uh, to the customer, which is easy. It's not something that it becomes a very complex thing because it's not it's not that it's not like. A, I'm buying groceries, which is I'm going to buy every week, right? Or every, uh, if not every week, every alternate week. I will make make this particular, you know, this event will come probably once 
in a year or once in a few years, so to say, for the customer. So how do you take care of the customer during that event, expand that entire interaction, you know, after the entire sale or purchase transaction, so that the customer gets to lock them. So that's the second level of differentiation that the technology ideally should bring, and I hope that it will bring. And the eventual stage, I would say that if you look at the travel and hospitality sector, I'm just trying to draw a parallel, uh, right? I mean, there are uh, the online players, right? Eventually, uh, you know, they they took away a lot of margins from the hotels, okay? And eventually, right, what happens is that the hotels and the online players had some sort of an issue between them, the conflict, the classic channel conflict that we say. So the third part is that as long as all these channels, all these players who are emerging are able to mutually, you know, share the benefit and eventually giving the maximum return to the customer is going to be the long-term thing. Otherwise, you know, I see in the next few years, right, a lot of such startups, a lot of these players will emerge, it will consolidate, and eventually then we will see probably, you know, from 2024 to 25 onwards, the stable used car journey to which Weber was saying, you know, hopefully Weber, we will touch to 2.1 of the number that you're talking about. Right. Uh, you know, I want to bring you both in, Akshay and Weber, to talk a little bit about what the future of your companies is in terms of which categories do you expect will do well and what the kind of roadmap is. Because, you know, when you talk about long-term strategy, uh, of course, there are several growth pillars that you focus on. So, uh, you know, let me begin with you, Akshay, to talk a little bit about what Zoom's plan is going forward. Are there new categories that you're looking at launching into? What's the kind of game plan? Sure. So, um, you know, one of the things that differentiates Droom from some of the other players in the market is that uh, at Droom, you can buy anything on wheels, anything that gets you from point A to point B, uh, 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 whether it's cars or two wheelers, scooters, uh, electric vehicles, uh, or anything under the sun, right? For example, we also have, uh, you know, bicycles, and even listings for planes on the, on the website, right? So, uh, you know, we are going to continue uh, investing in, in categories beyond cars as well. Within cars, as I spoke earlier, uh, you know, our more on the on the premium segment because we, we do see more and more of the demand, especially from second, third time buyers moving towards that side. And uh, the, the focus will be on geographic expansion within India. Uh, into the tier two and tier th three cities, which are going to command a larger share of the overall market. Then going back to, uh, you know, an interesting point that uh, Rajat mentioned, right? A car buying or a vehicle buying journey is not just about the, the asset or the vehicle. It's also about the services associated with it, right? So for example, especially when it comes to buying a used vehicle, you know, a, a a buyer doesn't know what whether the vehicle is in the right condition or not. Buyer doesn't know whether they are being charged the right price for it or not. They don't know whether there's a, you know any outstanding police fine on it, any outstanding loans on that vehicle or not. So just answering all of these uh, questions for the buyer, building the trust in the buyer to make that process of buying a, a used vehicle more seamless, uh, and more hassle-free. That's another focus area of ours. And we do that by, you know, building multiple products, like OBV, Eco History, et cetera. Another important aspect of the buying journey is access to finance, right? And other financial services like loans, right? In India, there is still, I would say, some um, disparity in terms of the number of people who want loans versus the number of people who want, who are eligible for loans. And we are working with our various financing partners, banks and BFCs in order to bridge that gap. That's going to be another growth driver for us. Then, uh, you know, because we are a technology focused company and we have built a platform which solves this problem uh, in a fundamental manner, uh, we believe that you know, this can also be replicated in other markets similar to India. Specifically, we are looking at Southeast Asia and Middle East and at a later point of time, Africa to uh, uh, launch these products and become a, an online auto e-commerce platform in, in these markets. Right, uh, Weber, would you like to come in out here? So Priya, in, we launched in 2019 with a vision of taking the auto retail, retail industry virtual. 
so our focus has been to build a technology which can take this industry online and we want to stay in forefront as the market goes there so we have a presence in multiple cities three or cities as of now to start with and we are working with a limited resources with the resources we want to build and reach to a level from where we can scale up and grow geographically so our key focus has been around building virtual reality technology initially to start with in pre-owned cars industry at some point in time we would also like to uh, go into new car industry and probably two wheelers also ev two wheelers specifically as everybody has been agreeing the demand has been coming from non metro cities and that is where we have been growing we plan on reaching around eight cities by end of this financial year and then trying to capture north india specifically by end of next financial year we are heavily focusing on improving our digital virtual presence by building virtual reality technology and keeping keep improving it we are in fact also exploring metaverse and will be filing some patents around the virtual reality technology so i am agreeing with uh, the demand has been coming from non metro cities and technology at some point in time see as of today nobody is going to buy cars online even if we give them whatever customer experience we can but at some point in time with right technology with right marketing the market is going online so we have to keep our base strong we provide good customer experience work on the right technology and right brand we definitely will be able to change and take this physical market online over next few years that is the key focus for us as of now all right on that note panelists thank you very much for joining in it's really been a pleasure speaking to all of you and uh, i'm sure that the audience has a lot of takeaways from this panel thanks so much for your time mm-hmm.